New members in my class ask what are layers when we're using GIMP? Well that's a very good question for uh, new starters. So I made a slideshow to demonstrate how it's done or what it entailed. When you load a photo into GIMP it becomes a background layer. So it's a layer in itself already but it's only a background layer. So anything you do on this affects that background layer. Going to layers on the menu bar you can add another layer. It's usually a transparency but there's other choices as well. You have another dialogue box jump up when you hit the, the make a new layer dialogue. That's the new layer above the one below. You can continue adding layers one on top of the other. The highlighted layer is the one you're normally working with. Viewing layers in a more visual way is is by explaining the, uh, the multiplane camera that was invented by the Disney Corporation in the early uh, late 1930s. The camera sat on top of a frame with uh, trays laid underneath. The bottom image was laid down as a layer, as a pane like a pane of glass, a background layer. Then another pane of glass laid on the top and another painting on it, which represented the little house and the field. Then followed by another layer of glass you could and with a fence line placed on it and the other top layer was one with the tree. So when you travel through the layers with the camera with the type of a zoom lens you uh, you would pass through to the image below and gave the impression you were traveling along past the uh, the tree and the fence and into the field. So that was the way layers are laid out. They're laid out in that format there. Each pane of glass has a painting on it to complete the final image as shown here. So when the camera sees it, it sees it as a final image. It's looking through each pane of glass, which is called a layer. Individual paintings are placed in order to build up the composition. And they also known as layers, the same as GIMP. So if you change the, any one of those layers around, which you can do also within GIMP, it would change the composition of the layer of the picture. You could have the tree on the other side of the fence by placing the tree on the bottom layer in the second layer there and the, and the, uh, the fence on the top. So it's the same thing as GIMP, you can swap your layers around. The same fundamentals apply to uh, GIMPs in layers. The layers in GIMP are uh, what you paint on top you can see through the transparency layers to the ones underneath and it doesn't affect any layer underneath. Laying those dobs of paint on that top layer doesn't affect the layer underneath. So in effect you are viewing everything through all panes of glass or appears to be and they're referred to as layers in the multiplane camera and also in GIMP and Photoshop and PaintShop Pro. When you right click the top layer and click on merge visible layers it brings all the layers together to complete one image so then you have one image with all the layers combined combined into one this is how you could visualize a layer in GIMP the top layer is that uh, grayed out transparency thing and that's the uh, the top layer there the one underneath is that that one layer is the image and the one underneath that is the background layer which is the white uh, screen, background screen that we loaded when we first loaded the image. When you type text into a GIMP using the text editor it, it creates a new layer and if the layer is a normal text layer it has a boundary around the, the text and that is the boundary of the uh, of the layer so it's only a very small one although it shows it as a very large one in the layers channel so the layer is only a small one this allows you to, to use the move tool which is that uh, one with all the crosses on it and you can uh, move the layer around on a different place onto the uh, onto the image below or paint on the transparency above and through the view it through the image below you can uh, flip it around and do whatever you like. You can uh, transform it using a transform uh, tool, that one there, and you can make it stretched out and, and appears laid on the image. This is an example of four layers in use. is the background layer, that's that one bottom one there, and that's the image of the uh, old photograph. It's going to be coloured. The next layer is the one where the 
the face was painted on so it doesn't affect the bottom layer it always uh, stays the way you see it then the next layer was the hair and the hair was coloured so it didn't affect the layers underneath and the top layer was for the collar and uh, so the collar was uh, you, in this case it was a painting I used the paint format to uh, demonstrate on how you can use the transparency so why use so many layers well it's so you can actually work the user can work with different layers and change the opacity of each one and also the mode type of, of the, uh, the layer mode you can change that as well so in this case here with the color paint I changed the, uh, the opacity down to 50% which allowed me to see through the, uh, the white painting of the collar uh, tracing and which allowed me to see the lace collar underneath. Moving the opacity layer permits the user and, and the uh, image to be transparent and come through and see uh, the rest of the image underneath. Another type of layer is a floating selected pasted layer. This is a different type of layer. A floating selected pasted layer is normally an object which has been cut out of an image or copied. In this case here I used the uh, lasso tool or the uh, free select tool and went around and selected all around the image and copied it to, to the clipboard. So you can cut it out or you can copy it to the clipboard. Either one works. But in this case it was a copy. Loading a new image as for a background, returning to edit and clicking on the paste, I can paste the, the cutout back that was on the clipboard back into the GIMP on layer on the top. Now it becomes a floating selected layer and you can see the boundaries of the layer so it's very small and at the other, those boundaries outside that cutout, those boundaries are transparent within that transparency. So you can only see the, uh, the person in the, in the image. When you click this icon here it makes it a permanent layer so it's not no longer becomes a floating layer but it still retains that layer boundary which makes it very useful. The layer can be visualized like the image below. The new independent layer can be resized, flipped or turned to black and white all independent by the layer below so it's just like you're working on something on top of the image below. The top layer was flipped over so the sunlight matched the face because uh, this person here was cut out from a photograph in another area and placed into an alpine site type of setting. So that completed the effect and then you just merge down, you right click the top layer and merge the two layers together. Layers are just like panes of glass that were shown in the early part of the slideshow with the multiplane camera. The first layer is your image background, that's that one there. The other layers are added, remaining independent from the background layer, that's the particular one down, particular one down the bottom there. Other layers can be uh, applied to the top and all act in the same way. You can see through them if they're a transparency layer. Building on top of the layers, you can modify each individual layer using the opacity slider or the uh, layer modes. Now that's another method of changing the, the, mayor, the layer modes, the way they react. So in this example I'm using a layer to add colour to the uh, old-fashioned painting or uh, photograph. Now the top layer has, has got the painting and it hasn't affected the layer underneath. Now I could have uh, changed the layer mode before I started this but this is a, a demonstration on how the the colors can become transparent from the top layer. By using the layer mode button, that's that one there, the arrow, the drop down arrow, you can choose uh, any one of those uh, screen layouts there and this one here is called the overlay which is a a blending mode which blends the top layer to the bottom layer but still it's f fully independent from the bottom layer so it becomes a blended mode which allows the two images to be visible uh, from uh, in between each other. This is only a brief covering on how layers are used. There are many other ways of using layers and layer masks. In the next tutorial I will show another use of a layer. Using the layer as a spotlight 
on part of a photogra photograph. And this is useful if you uh, u f f fail to use a flash on a person when uh, the, sh the, the sun was at the behind them and you've got a very dark shadow on their face. Using this method with a layer you can highlight the face and leave the rest of the photo as it is. Thank you for watching and uh, don't forget to rate my video. Visit my web page which is uh, on my uh, channel. Just click on the top corner there on the blue and it takes me to your, my channel. Thank you for watching.